What's up beautiful people, it's your boy Judio and I'm back again with a new video. Today we're going to be checking out a special video by Devi Fogatti and this one is titled How I Went From $500, $500 to Half a Billion in 5 Years. I don't know about you guys but I'm very curious and very interested to see this video because me too, I want to make half a billion. I'm not even going to lie. So let's see what he has to say. This information is going to help all of us. Without wasting your time, let's get to it. My name's Davey and this is my story, how I went from $500 to $500 million. I was Tell a very us. insecure kid, I was slightly pudgy, and now I'm on the Australian financial rich list under Margot Robbie. Ooh. I have... Number 57 bought my dream home, bought my girlfriend a dream car. I don't actually like telling these stories. Sometimes I feel like they come off very, very arrogant, especially for people that don't know me and I'm slightly introverted, but it is- It's not arrogant, tell us, we want to know. <laughs> a really, really to be good story for young entrepreneurs to hear too. and there's lots of lessons. So here it is, this is my story from $500 to 500 million in just five years. Mm -hmm. So I was born in a, not a huge city in Australia, it's called Adelaide. I was a very insecure kid. I was the kid that went to the beach and just wouldn't take their shirt off. I would have to swim in my shirt. I had a very supportive family when I was young. They you know, supported me both emotionally, but they also worked incredibly hard to support me financially after school I would go and watch them sell furniture they had a small furniture business in Adelaide and I would just get to watch them constantly just you know working really really hard to, to put me through school school was difficult for me for a very long time I was told that I was stupid at a very young age especially through primary school and I believed Children are mean, especially to each other. It was probably exacerbating my insecurities and I just never tried. Constantly arguing with teachers, constantly getting detentions and everything was just felt like it was going downhill. I had a parent teacher interview, I think it was grade 10. All of my five teachers just said that I was failing and I was incredibly difficult to teach. After that, my parents pretty much had enough. They gave me an ultimatum to either start working hard or they're going to find another school or even just stop supporting me overall. I felt a deep feeling of shame at that point. I knew that there was something within me. I knew that I wasn't stupid and I had a decent amount of intelligence, enough to make a good life for myself. But it Everybody needs that moment, that moment of shift, of transition. It wasn't until I was scrolling through YouTube, I used to watch mind-numbing viral videos, Charlie, Charlie bit me, me. <laughs> and I came across all of the old Nike commercials. These were so, so exhilarating in every single way. They would, you would watch them and you just feel like you could run through a wall. I watched the Jordan commercial where he talks about how many game winning shots that he's taken and he's lost. After that moment, I started to pick up that all greatness was, was just a willingness to work hard and fail. So I knew I needed a plan. I needed to get better grades, I needed to get a job, and I needed to go to university to make money. Well, I thought university was the right path at that time. This was the path that I could feel better about myself and maybe achieve greatness, which I didn't actually really know what it was then, but I knew I wanted to do something awesome. The first job, I was moving things around in a warehouse and I was getting minimum wage, which I think was about- Definitely did that too. <laughs> Shout out to Amazon and Pure later. <laughs> $16 an hour even back then. Then I used that exactly money. Exactly how much I made. To go to the gym, I started to get absolutely obsessed with the gym, which made me feel so much better and was kind of the first lesson that small bits of compounded effort can actually improve over time and just help your mental and physical health. Then I got a tutor as well to help me with the subjects that I was struggling with. I enrolled in difficult subjects like maths, physics, chemistry. I knew it was working when one year after I decided to change, I had a parent-teacher interview. I only had one teacher that was the same as previously. He said, in my career, I've never seen a child turn their life around as much as David has this year, which really cemented that I was on the right track and ended up finishing school on, on pretty good grades and getting into mining engineering. I just chose mining engineering because I thought it sounded cool and you could go straight into a six figure job, which sounded also cool. On my first day of mining engineering, I walked into this 
giant amphitheater in Adelaide University and I couldn't even see the lecturer who was so far away who was on a big screen and he said you're all used to being the smartest in your class look to the left look to the right only one of you is going to pass this class what? and turns out I was not one of those people I hated university I didn't like the subject I was Why only would you say that though is that like the requirements only one person has to pass you can't see that you're teaching them you're there to make them pass doing it because i got told that i could get six figures out of it and it sounded cool and, and because there is no structured or forced way of turning up i you know didn't rock up at all and ended up failing i'd say one of the main reasons why i failed university was because i was just so passionate about business and i just was constantly launching new things i was trying to sell Ooh. singlets and hats and i actually started making a fair bit of money on instagram so i started an instagram where i'd go into supplement stores and take photos of the supplements and write reviews what's good about them then i was able to sell advertising on on those Instagrams to you know fitness tea brands and that kind of stuff. It started off small, um, make five dollars here, ten dollars here. I'd be out on a night out during you know young party stage, and I couldn't afford drinks. But then I'd sell a shout out, and then would all cheer because I'd be able to actually buy the drinks. It started to grow really quickly. I created lots of different verticals of accounts. I created them in workouts, in nutrition. I was doing cooking recipes and putting those wow. up. It probably got to a point where I was making the six figures that I wanted from mining engineering just from Instagram, which felt huge compared to you know having minimum wage just previously. Then mm -hmm. I decided to do personal training because I thought you know I could get more into the fitness industry, learn more about it. During the day, I would have six burner phones on the bench. People thought I was a drug dealer. I think dad thought I was a drug dealer for a very <laughs> long time because they would all have different accounts. Went from a timid child to a drug dealer. <laughs> okay, I guess that's how the plot's always twist on them i'd sell shout outs during the day train my clients in the morning and the night working 16 hour days and i remember yeah checking my bank account i had about a hundred thousand dollars then it mm. it all kind of probably went to my head and things went very very downhill i decided to take a lot of the money that i made from personal training to try to build a huge food franchise. I was really into Vietnamese rolls at that stage and I thought that there could be a big franchise of that, which there now is. It's called Rolled in Australia. So I stopped personal training and I took a lot of the money and I set up a, a shop in my local area where there wasn't really a shop before. 5 a.m. I would wake up and I would go get bread rolls and then I would cook pork in the morning and then I would just basically work non-stop. I'd still do my Instagrams during the day, wash dishes at 5 p.m. and head home and just reset. I wasn't seeing my friends at all. Food businesses are actually really, really difficult to make work. I was losing money. Lucky I did still have my Instagram business. It kind of evolved. I was flipping Instagram. So I'd buy them and then sell them to other people for a bit of a higher price. I would also just grow them a little bit in the meantime. And that was working really well until I ended up buying an Instagram from someone. It was probably my biggest buy ever it cost forty thousand dollars bought the instagram got all the access to it everything was all sweet then it turns out that that was actually hacked the original owner was like this is hacked instagram gave the account back to the original owner the scammer already had my forty thousand dollars and i was just left with nothing that was almost all of my money at the time so i couldn't buy any more instagram lots of tribulations bro lots of tribulations and trials people are trying you in these streets <laughs> But it's gonna end up well. I wanna hear how he got to $500 million. Them. My Vietnamese roll shop business was pretty much going down the drain and I got into a very, very dark place. Mm -hmm. I remember completely being disorientated in the bathroom, mentally just not even there with a lot of bad thoughts. And it was a really good moment to for my family to completely lift me up out of that. I was constantly drinking at that time as well. So my family taught me a really good lesson. I remember dad put a, a rock in my shoe and he made me walk down the driveway in with the rock on the shoe and it was poking me and hurting me and then he took the rock out of the shoe and then put it on again and said walk down the trap when obviously it stopped hurting and he said these mistakes if you carry them with you they're just going to hurt you just learn from them and move on so I knew I needed a new plan I packed up basically gave the shop away I was gonna to move to Melbourne surround myself with great people learn as much as I can about e-commerce and launch a brand hopefully this brand would make me a millionaire and make me financially free I was working at 
the fifth watches, doing Instagram management, influencer management, also learning photography, videography, Facebook ads, Google ads. It was an amazing time. I learned so much. I never gave up on launching my own business. At that time, I remember I launched a seasoning business while I was over there. I ordered six kilograms of parsley and delivered it to my house back in Adelaide. I remember getting a text from dad when I was flying back and he said, why are all of these mm -hmm. herbs on my doorstep? <laughs> I think that mixed with the six burner phones, he definitely thought I was a drug dealer for a very, very long time because none of those businesses ended up working and I was constantly flying back from Adelaide to Melbourne because I missed my friends and and my girlfriend ended up spending all of my savings that I've made. I remember checking my bank account, I was back at zero dollars. It felt like I was back at square one. I had zero dollars, I was back living with my parents, but my mind and the knowledge that I had was just invaluable. All I needed now was a product that was just gonna change my life. I was looking for products everywhere, testing everything, and then I came across an article on Facebook around how weighted blankets can help people with sensory disorders or insomnia. Naturally, I wanted to test it out, got every single blanket in the house, was on the couch, piled them up, while that didn't really feel that good because it was maybe 400 degrees under the blanket, I did keep looking into it and there were so many glowing reviews on forums and there wasn't that many products out there, especially in Australia, that was selling the product. So I decided to commit to it. I decided this was gonna be the product. It was helping people. It could really make a difference and I definitely thought it was going to work. So I ended up ordering some stock from China. I got one sample initially, got my girlfriend and uh, my neighbors, she was about 11 at the time, and I did a photo shoot in the house. I had so many skills from all of those past failures that, that I could launch the store from, the, from scratch. I could launch the Facebook ads, launch the Google ads. I could do everything from scratch. So I really didn't need any money to get it started. I had about $500 at that stage that I saved up from doing weddings and other videography shoots. To get the cash for the business, I decided to sell on preset which is where you sell stock that isn't actually in the country yet. You are making a promise that you're gonna ship it at this date. So I would take the order, buy the stock, and bring it in because I had no idea what I was doing. They were sending me paperwork to sign. I had no idea. It actually got caught in a customs border hold, but the Australian Federal Police, they scan the product, especially if it's the first time that you're bringing in stock. And I remember it was just absolutely devastating. It, the stock was about five weeks delayed and I had about 400 customers. Wow. My first 400 customers for my big business were waiting five weeks to get their stock. I was thought, I'm gonna throw away this huge opportunity. Ended up getting the email that they cleared finally after just constant emails between border security. And it was just the most ecstatic feeling. I was just off from that. He cried. I like the fact that he kept the memories, you know. I did about $200 in the first Helps day, $1,000 in the first week, $10,000 in the second month. Ended up scaling to doing $1.5 million profit in its first year. From wow. there, I started spending the money as you do. I bought my Range Rover that I was, was always a goal for me as a kid. I remember getting and driving it out of the, the yard, people thinking that I was pretty young to be buying it and I just couldn't stop smiling with it. Was able to buy my girlfriend, her car, bought my house that I love. I'm currently looking for a beach house. I get to travel the world because we've just got so many American Express points. So after launching <laughs> Climbing Blankets, I launched the Udi, which wow. took me from earning millions to tens of millions. We have millions of happy customers. Uh, all of the team, the 60 people that work there, love the- An entire brand created hoodies from it brand good, good we are inclusive fun happy we make people feel very comfortable in their own home it's a brand that i'm incredibly proud of when i look back and at myself in school watching those nike commercials and how amazing that brand made people feel couldn't have imagined that i cre create something like udi that has a very similar effect on certain types of people there was always times that i doubted myself through the journey but the main thing is to just never give up constantly mm -hmm. keep learning and just really at least try to enjoy the process as well enjoy the process of learning if i can give one piece of advice as well through this video is you're not too stupid you are in a position to make a change in the world and just yeah enjoy the process don't forget to like and subscribe Thanks. absolutely okay honestly i'm gonna say the video didn't go the route i expected because i was expecting him to say this is how I made the money.
break down what I did, strategies and things. It didn't go that route. But it, it was even, should I say, almost better. You know, he told the story. He gave inspiration, motivated me. I don't know. I just like, I like the story. Like it, it, it doesn't feel heavy to receive, you know, it doesn't feel too complicated to receive. It feels easier. It feels more natural the way he told the story and what he did, everybody can do it. I'm sure lots of us, we make lots of mistakes like that. But when we fail, when we fail the first time, we believe um, it's over and then we stop trying. Man lost hundred thousand, then lost 40,000 and just messed up the money, but he still ended up making um more money and there's something he said that was very important right there he said when he started the new business that actually worked he didn't need any more experience because he had already gotten a lot of experiences from the past failures that there was very important so you're not really failing you're just learning right so don't worry if you if you're losing money just take it like you've invested that money into knowledge <laughs> Yeah, even though it might cost you your food or your housing, just take it like it's investment into knowledge. But anyways, that was a very good video by Davey Fogarty. And as always, I'll put the link to the channel in the description in case you want to go check him out. Let me know your thoughts on that one. If you want us to bring any other video um, by Davey, feel free to let me know in the comment section. It's the end of this one. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. I'll see you on the next one. Have a wonderful day. Peace.